Konnichiwa guys, Stefan here, talking about the past, chilling out. If that's what you're into, consider subscribing. If you like, up to you. So when I mention Japanese history, you're probably thinking to yourself, samurai, castles, ninjas, maybe some war crimes, but uh, obviously there's more, so much more. Little did I realize, I'm ashamed at myself, that Japan is covered, absolutely covered in these megalithic tombs called Ko Fun, massive keyhole shaped tombs. I had no idea, how could I go 29 years on this planet, not know about that as the history lover that I am. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, oh Stefan, don't beat yourself up, you can't know everything, blah da 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 da. Man, there are tons of these things, they've counted them. So far, the count is up to 161,000 560. There are 16,577 in Hyogo province alone, and uh, the biggest one, believed to be the burial mound of Emperor Nintoku, 400 meters, and covers over 80 acres. It's insane, crazy. I don't know why these aren't super famous. Maybe they are and I'm an idiot, but I'd have thought I'd have heard about them. Anyway, what are these Kofun? What do we know about them realistically? What do I know about them? All these tombs were built between 250 and 538 CE, and this time period is known as the Kofun period after these tombs. Kofun comes from the two Chinese words ku, meaning ancient, and bian, 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 meaning a burial mound. So Kofun means ancient burial mound, and they're from that ancient burial mound period. It's a very practical naming system. Well done, Japan. Now, at this moment in time, the Kofun period, Japan was not the one country that we know of today. It was made up of uh, lots of small kingdoms. And not all of these kingdoms made Kofun. This is really just sort of central Japan. And this period was really when Japan was starting to centralize, starting to become one country under the, the imperial family, and also the start of writing in Japan. So there's not many written sources about these. This is right at the start of Japanese history. They started being built around the time a princess called Himiko became queen of one of these Japanese kingdoms. And this queen, she had a lot of political connections to China, particularly the kingdom of Wei. And she became queen of either Kyushu or Yamato. Historians aren't sure, but they know it was in the year 190. Around this time, there was a great famine and the people were making ritual deposits of bronze objects, particularly bells. Archaeologists theorize that this may be a rejection of the, the kami or the spirits. Man, it's dark. So yeah, what was I saying? So archaeologists theorize this may have been a rejection of the kami or the, the spirits and that the people were making a sort of ritual offering of the items that represented their gods. Sounds pretty reasonable theory, you know, time of great hardship, great strife, people look to their gods, they're not helping out. Perhaps a sacrifice will work, or maybe even some new gods will help them even more. Now, if you were a king or a queen in this period, this isn't good news. If these rituals failed to appease the gods, you were next for the chop. The king, queen of this little area was also the chief religious leader. Obviously, the gods aren't happy with you. You're not pulling your weight, not something with the mustard. Then uh, you are next for the ritual sacrifice. Perhaps knowing that her uh, head was on the line, Himiko tried to revolutionize rituals in this period, and she imported 100 bronze mirrors from China that went on a tour of her little Japanese kingdom. And, Historians, archaeologists theorize this was her attempting to bring new spirits into the country to, uh, you know, restore the religious life of her kingdom after the old gods had, had let her down. The Kofun period also clearly represents a, a greater degree of social stratification. And the, again, this is tied into that uh, centralization of the Japanese state. So obviously, these were for the, the rich guys only. You had to be a big wig to be buried in there. And the offerings in the tomb suggests that this was for big wigs as well. Inside, they found swords, gold jewelry, clothes. They were decorated, bows and arrows, horse riding equipment, everything you would associate with a noble. They also contained these uh, clay cylinders and figurines called Haniwa. Haniwa? Haniwa? I don't know how to speak Japanese. 
And uh, these clay cylinders and later figurines represented animals, warriors, dancers, farmers, the whole spectrum of uh, medieval Japanese society. So clearly these big wigs had a lot of pull, wanted to represent their community. In the afterlife, I think that's a fairly good assumption. Not only do the uh, grave goods suggest that this was for the big shots and that society was centralizing, just the fact that you could get uh, enough people together to construct a monument that covers 80 acres. That's enormous, that's a huge piece of land. And perhaps it suggests the existence of a serf-like class, you know, peasant scum can be easily bossed around. You, you do this job, you scumbag. Who knows, again, not much writing, but that's a, a pretty safe assumption. These kofun were not only uh, burial places, they clearly had a role in the religion of Japan at that time. They had uh, temples on the complex and uh, in different places. I'm definitely gonna have to look at my notes for this one. In the moat of Makiku, Makikuku, Ishizuka Kofun, there were several pillars in the middle of the moat and on each pillar they had a wooden cockerel. Archaeologists theorize these cockerels perhaps represented some sort of wake ceremony, trying to bring the dead back to life or maybe bring the dead spirits back into the area. Again, not much writing, but you know, the cockerel is around in the morning, cock a doodly doodly doo. Uh, the sun comes up, you know, new life, new birth, fertility. I think that's a pretty uh, reasonable theory. Of course, we'll never know for sure, but that seems reasonable to Miho. So why did the Japanese stop building them? Why did they stop at 160,000? Well, the sixth century when they stop being built coincides with the arrival of Buddhism in Japan. Now, I don't know what element of Buddhism stops this practice or, or why it stopped. That's an interesting coincidence though. They start at a period of religious upheaval, they end at the arrival of a new religious practice as well. So clearly they were connected to the ritual life of the uh, early medieval period in Japan. Clearly. And that is basically all I know about Kofun. This video was uh, really Kofun to do. See what I did there? <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, just goes to show, isn't it amazing what's out there, even when you're a history buff like me, you love it, you read about it all the time, there's still so much to discover. All the more reason to subscribe to my channel. Shameless self-promotion there. That's it, over here YouTube will have picked one of my videos that it thinks you will like the best. If you want to watch it, click on that. You can also click on my face to subscribe. Sayonara, see you guys.